Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my Restart Access series where I show you how to make Access reboot itself. And if you haven't watched part one, go watch part one and then come on back. All right, so let's start in our batch file because I want to address this. This is a problem that I had initially. Let's edit in Notepad. Now, the trick here is if you got a fast system, right, which which my other machine is pretty fast, it'll, you know, the access database will launch the batch file and the batch file will try to run the database before it's shut down. And so it'll just think that that's the copy it's supposed to run. So what you got to do is put a little delay in here. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I like to just put a ping command in here, like ping 599cd.com. That's my website. What that does is, so access will run the batch file and then immediately close while that ping is running. That's the first thing that the batch file does. Ping takes about five seconds to run. And if you're not on the internet, you could just put in here like ping server or ping your own IP address or whatever you want to put in there. Okay, you want to ping my server? Go ahead, I don't care. All right, so I'm going to save that. Now, if I run the database, let's open her up. I told you my system's a little slow. There it goes. All right, it's going to do its countdown. Four, three, two, one. It's going to shell out to the batch file, which is doing its ping. See? Takes about five seconds. And then it restarts the database. See? And then this thing's going to do its thing. It's going to loop. And this little delay ensures that the batch file isn't going to start the database until the previous iteration of the database has closed. And if your machine's really slow and you find out that it's still running into a conflict, put two pings in there. Put three pings in there. Put as many pings as you want. Pinging is free, right? Now, if this is your server, sometimes it's nice to come in here and to be able to pause this guy, right? Maybe you want to stop and go do some work, add a field to a table, whatever. So you don't want to stop that without having to close the, the menu for him. So I like to put a little pause on there. So let's go into the main menu form here, design, not delete, design. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get hello world out of here since we don't really need you. And let's drop a check box right under the timer right there. Little format painter. We'll call this guy pause. All right, we'll left justify it there. Let's name this guy pause. And what I'm going to do is um, when the form loads, we'll, we'll make sure pause is set to false. So let's go to the form load event. This guy here on load. Right, right in here, say pause equals false or true. If you want to start the database, pause, but then your loop won't continue, right? And then in its after update event, find after update event. Let me bring this over here so you can see it. There it is. Hit the after update event, dot, dot, dot. And I, I move things down to my primary monitor screen because that's where the batch file was running. So things are a little discombobulated. All right, so in here, we're going to say if pause, then that means if pause equals true, if the user checked on the pause box and it's now on, that means me dot timer interval equals zero. That's how you pause the timer. Just set the timer interval to zero. Otherwise, me dot timer interval equals a second. Put it back the way that it should be. And that's it. Save that. Throw in the debug compile. We can close that. We can, let's see here. Let's close this and reopen it. And pause. Okay, and it stops it. And then resume. You can also, if you want to, if you want to put in the pause here, when you click on the pause, set the countdown back to five or 30 or 20 or whatever you want the initialized setting to be. Right? And there we go. There's my little ping. And it relaunches. See? Okay. Now, next. You may want this to only run once an hour. I like to reboot. Actually, I used to reboot mine every hour. And as my database has gotten more and more complex, I've even started to see some bugs creep in, in just an hour. So I actually reboot mine every half hour now. But I'll show you how to do it every hour. It's not that hard. So in the form load event, where we've been, right? This onload event. When this form loads, we're going to initialize a start time. Okay. 
Uh, you can put it anywhere in here you want. I'm going to use... Uh, what is it, Adam, that you like to use? What are we going to use? We're going to use temp bars. <laughs> uh, we'll call it database start time, and that equals right now. That initializes when the database was started. You could use a form field variable. You could use a, you know, a, a field on the form if you want. There's a, a lot of ways you can do this. Now, in the form timer, okay, I'm going to assume if you got a countdown timer running, let's say, you know, every 30 seconds you want your event to run, then you'll you know do server stuff here send your emails blah 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 whatever now here we're going to check for hourly restart okay and i'm going to say if now minus that temp bar value right this guy right here okay take now whatever now is subtract that what's left over is the difference between those two times right that's a little date math all right well, if that's greater than one, that's a whole day, right? If this is greater than or equal to one, then that's one whole day. Because in access with our date math, a value of one equals one day. But I don't want a day. I want an hour. So what's an hour? Well, it's 1 24th of a day. That's the easy way to do it. You could use date diff. You can use all kinds of different ways. This is my easy way to do it. If it's even hours, it's just one divided by 24. If you want a half an hour, then divide that by another two. All right, but I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, oh, then then do your reboot. There's your hourly reboot, right? Right here. And if. And now the only time the system will restart is if the last time that it restarted was more than an hour ago. And that's how you do that. And then what I did with my database was I wanted mine to reboot as close to the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour, but I'll just stick with the top of the hour for now, as close to the top of the hour as possible. And I know for a fact that my loop takes three minutes to run from the start to the finish. The whole, everything that the server has to do, the longest possible loop will be three minutes, right? So I added on the end of this, I said, and, right, so this, this has to be true. This whole thing right here has to be true, right? It's got to be at least an hour ago. And the minute of now has to be less than 10. So it won't reboot if it's 10 minutes past the hour or later, right? So if you started at, you know, if you started the database at 12 after, okay, then it's not going to reboot again until it comes back around to the top of the hour. And it's got to be at least an hour since the last time it rebooted. So at most, you might have an hour and 50 minutes. So that's, that's how I did that. But there's all kinds of tricks you can play. This is just, this is just more, more Legos for your toolbox, people. <laughs> now, if you like learning with me, if you like this kind of VB stuff, check out my developer lessons on my website. I've got hundreds of hours of developer lessons to teach you pretty much everything there is to know about Access. And I've got a couple of related products to talk about real quick. I have an access updater that uses a similar technique to what you just learned, except instead of shelling out to a batch file, it does shell out to another database, all right? The access updater database. And its job is to not only reboot the database, but it will copy the front end around your network. So you set this up so it runs on all the front ends in your office. And if you want to push an update once a, you know, once a day or however many, you know, however often you want it to run, it will go out to the network, get the update, and then put it on the front end. So you don't have to run around to everyone's chairs and update their machines. And I also have this template called the Access Watchdog. This guy's job is to watch and see if Access is still running. Okay. Um, if your database locks up, you got a server database doing its thing, right? Sitting in the corner, sending emails or processing whatever you got to process. If that thing locks up, you want to know about it. And obviously, if it's locked up, it's not going to be able to reboot itself. Well, the watchdog is a little PowerShell script that you also run on the server. And its only job is to watch your access database and make sure your access database is running. And if not, it kills it and then forcefully restarts it again. So check that out. I'll put links to all this stuff down below. So that's going to do it. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in access and SQL server. 
Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your Access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members 
Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus access to my Code Vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any Tech Help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.